going to give you a couple of good recommendations of movies to watch on all the major streaming services as well as what to look for on rentals and the theater for this week. As far as Netflix goes, uh, Coco is just getting released on Netflix. It's very rare that I talk about uh, family movies because I like my horror, I like my action, I like my dark movies. If you've been following me for a while, you know that. But Coco is really, really fantastic. Now, this is not one that I saw in theater. Uh, because my son, he just turned two recently, but I've watched it since it's been available on Blu-ray. And Pixar, they just have a really good way of developing a story most of the time. But Coco is really one of the best ones they've done in a while. Not only is it beautiful, not only does it look good, but the story really has a lot of layers and it's really developed. And I don't feel like I was being told another iteration of a story I've been told before. It felt very kind of original and fresh. So those are all reasons I really loved it. This one drops on uh, May 31st. So if you're listening to this the very first day I release it, you're gonna have to wait a day, but it's, it's getting ready to get added to Netflix. So that's gonna be one of the better ones you can watch with the family. And then another one that uh, I really wanna talk about is Small Town Crime. Now that's just one I watched this past week. Uh, I had wanted to watch it. It was available to rent while it was still in theaters and I just, I never got around to it. I wasn't particularly motivated because the trailer looks so-so. It's on Netflix right now. I really, really dug this movie. It is a, a typical kind of crime drama. He's an ex-cop. He's on an investigation, a, a sort of self, uh, he's a sort of a self-proclaimed investigator in this one. And it's dark, it's gritty. It's grittier than I expected it to be from the onset. And I actually did a movie review on this on the YouTube channel. You can check that out. I'll put a link in the description for Amazon. A Simple Plan is one I know a lot of people have seen. If you haven't seen it though, it's gonna be similar to Small Town Crime. I just happen to love that genre and this is one of the better ones in it. Bill Paxton's in it, uh, Billy Bob Thornton. It's a very Fargo-ish movie. It's about some guys that find a bunch of money out in the woods. Uh, and then when it comes time to chop it up and what to do with it, people start to get a little squirrely. And it's really, really well done. This is actually uh, directed by Sam Raimi, who did, he, he's most famous for Evil Dead. Uh, and this one's really, really just, it's, it's good. It's not Fargo good, but it's close. Uh, I really like it a lot. I watch it. Every couple of years, I'll pick it up. I own it, but the fact that it's on a Prime, if you've never seen it, it is one of the better little crime movies you can currently watch on Prime. And then I, I'm kind of excited to talk about this one. Uh, there's a movie called Mystery Team. It's an odd little movie, and the reason I'm recommending it this week, I usually try to tell you why. There's usually a reason why I'm recommending a movie this particular week, so it's not totally random. Uh, everybody's going nuts for Donald Glover right now, and, and he's fantastic. He's got a hit song out uh, with a controversial music video. He's uh, Lando Calrissian in the solo movie. His show that he writes and acts in and produces, Atlanta, uh, is, a, is one of the most rocking shows that's on right now. Uh, and so he's just hitting on all cylinders. So it's super funny. There's this older, I want to say this movie's probably seven years old. It's this little comedy movie that he started in with his friends from Derek Comedy, which is basically an online comedy channel that is really where he got his start. They star in this movie where they're these 18 year old kids that basically they, they had this like mystery team they called it when they were young kids and they would solve like mysteries like you know, a lost baseball, stuff like that around the neighborhood. But now they're 18, they're all virgins, they don't drive, they all ride bikes, and they're still like in the mystery team. The funny thing, and he wrote it, the funny thing about this is it feels kind of like a kind of like a, a young adult movie or a, like like it's it feels like it's for 12 year olds and then there is some raunchy adult humor in it. It's really funny. If you're a fan of what uh, Glover is doing right now, you, you'll at least get a kick out of this movie, even if you don't like it. I happen to love it. And then for uh, Hulu, uh, the entire uh, Friday the 13th series is currently on Hulu. Hulu is a tough nut to crack. They may not stay on these lists for long if they don't pick it up and start putting some better movies up. But 
To be able to sit and binge watch uh, Friday the 13th, that's pretty cool. So that's currently available. I don't know that anybody else has all of them. I've kind of looked. It's really hard to juggle and keep track of all of them. But if it's been a while since you sort of binge watch those, they start off really good. They get progressively worse. So just start and stop when you get tired of them. HBO, uh, Dunkirk is really one of the better movies currently available on it. Uh, I still don't really know where I land on this movie. I like it. It's very good. But it's a Christopher Nolan movie, and I don't know where I rank it in his movies because it's so different. But that said, forget about it being Christopher Nolan. It's a really fantastic war movie, and in a genre that's so crowded with really good movies, Dunkirk is able to stand out just because it is different in a couple of ways. One is the chronology, the way it breaks up time. is really interesting. You don't realize it's doing it until far into the movie. And the big one for me is all of the boats, the airplanes, everything you're seeing, they're not replicas. They're, they're refurbished period uh, pieces and it shows. Like the movie has a real feel to it different from anything else. You can really tell it was probably subliminal the first time you watched it. Watch it again and there's this sense of realism to every environment you're in and it is heavily because everything's real. Every Everything is very, very authentic. I think that's just fantastic. That had to be expensive. That had to be difficult. They didn't have to do that and it, and it really works that they did. And then another big one that's currently on HBO is War for the Planet of the Apes. Um, I was disappointed by this one for two reasons. One, it got really hyped up. I mean, I had, I usually don't get real high expectations for movies like this. I like the series, I really do. But this one, as the third installment, got super hyped up. And that led me down. And then also the title is very, very misleading. It's not really War for Planet of the Apes. It's a prison movie. If you look at this as a prison style movie, it is a, it is a really good one. It's really, really well done. I like it a lot on a second viewing, knowing that. It's got a great opening. Woody Harrelson is fantastic in it. I feel like he's a little overused at times, but he works really well in this one. So for those reasons, I really like this one. It's my rental pick of the week. It's Annihilation, starring Natalie Portman, uh, written and directed by Alex Garland. Now this one is also based on a book, and it's also not particularly faithful to the book. Now this one, I really, really loved. The first time watching it, it's so trippy at the end. It's, it really is, I don't want to spoil anything on this particular episode. It is very much like in the vein of 2001 A Space Odyssey. And I'm not exaggerating in terms of like where the end of this movie goes. And I couldn't tell why watching it. It's too coded. If you liked Annihilation, I did a full, like a 20 minute video on this that really analyzes it, breaks it down, explains a lot about it. I could have spent hours trying to explain everything, but I tried to get the real meat and potatoes. Alex Garland said that he basically read the book once. He had an experience with it, he digested it, and then began to write the screenplay for this. And so he has sort of described this story, the movie, as a dream inspired by the book. So he sort of like didn't refer back to the book, he didn't refer back to it for accuracy. He sort of just like let it turn into, it, it, it fermented and turned into something else. I think that's a really cool way to look at it. If, if you don't know the name Alex Garland, you probably saw his, his previous film, uh, Ex Machina, very popular sci-fi flick. For me, Annihilation is the better movie. It goes way beyond any sort of like, it, it's so good, I, again, I'm not gonna spoil it. I can tell you right now, everyone listening, everyone taking this recommendation is not going to like this movie. Part of what happened with this movie is uh, the studio dumped it. Now they released it in the US, but they sold off the international rights to Netflix because they basically determined that it was too smart for most audiences and that they, they felt like they were gonna lose money. Uh, so they just, they, they dumped it. It's really a shame. I think it's a really fantastic movie. It's one that you can revisit and think a lot about. I'll be watching it uh, now that it's available on Blu-ray and streaming. 
As far as the theater goes, there's a couple of movies. There's one called uh, American Animals that I'm interested to see. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about it yet. It looks cool. Uh, it, it looks like a kind of a heist movie. It looks like it's got kind of an interesting thing. That comes out this week, probably in a limited release. But the one I want to talk about for this week is called Upgrade. Now, this one is basically about a guy who gets some technology added to his body that allows him to like, not just fight, but like, it, it upgrades his body. Now, that doesn't sound particularly special. We've seen that done before. Uh, we've seen it done poorly. We've seen it done well. This one is interesting to me because like, he's sort of having fun with it and it's almost like it completely overrides his body and he's just along for the ride. And that that angle on it seems kind of cool. Like it, they could do some fun stuff with it and they do do some fun stuff with it in the trailer. So I'm excited to see that one this week. Not anything real major coming out this week. That looks like the pick for me this week. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube, let me know what you think in the comments below about my picks of the week. If you've got anything you want to share, let us know. People do read the comments, including myself. I still read all of them. So thanks for that. If you are a regular commenter, you know who you are. So this segment is actually from my weekly podcast that I put out every single Monday. Uh, if you like this video and you're new here, definitely click that subscribe button and click the little bell icon because subscribing without it basically means nothing on YouTube now. Uh, but you'll get tons of movie recommendations every single week. It'll almost be impossible for you to run out of things to watch on Netflix, Amazon Prime, and other streaming services. Uh, if you like longer form content, Content, definitely check out my podcast, uh, review it. That'll definitely help this channel grow. But videos like this one, I'll keep making them as long as you keep watching them. But thanks for watching this one, and you will see me next time.